Right, let's go over to Florida in the U.S., where we're going to be joined by political analyst Bulent Yeos. Bulent, thanks for joining me here on A News. It's good to see you, sir. Uh, it's not our usual times, I know. So this war is going on in, in Russia, in Ukraine, I, bet, I, I mean, with Russia. Now, you, the U.S. president has come out and he's sort of backed pretty much what everyone else is doing and stopped the um, importation of Russian fuel uh, to ho hopefully add extra sanctions to Russia. But how is he faring? I mean, how it's got bipartisan deal, but gas prices are on the rise in the U.S. This can't be good for Biden. Can it? Well, uh, in, in the short term, it, it, it's, it's a mixed situation. If you, if you look at the uh, polls, uh, you are right. Uh, Joe Biden uh, is really sunk in the polls and uh, continues to do so as of uh, late February. We don't have, of course, the results uh, of what would happen in March. But having said that, uh, the way that he approaches, although uh, many people uh, think that he should do more in, in a bipartisan way, and overall his strategy is uh, well regarded and uh, is getting more and more appreciated. It's a tough thing what he's trying to do. It's not emotional. Uh, it's very firm. Uh, he puts the diplomacy at the front uh, from the beginning. And he uh, developed the art of diplomacy uh, in, in, this, uh, in this particular war in a very strong uh, manner. However, diplomacy is, uh, is an avenue that it's not really apparent to ordinary people its outcome. It's, it's not like you're sending the planes and bombing or uh, you know, reacting to, uh, to a war, which uh, would, uh, you know, uh, could be in, in, on the surface could be well appreciated. However, it's a very dangerous route, and he made it very clear from the beginning. And uh, he chose to be very transparent even to Mr. Putin that, you know what, no matter what's going to happen, I'm not going to engage in a war with you. Um, so uh, some, uh, some folks uh, point to, in the direction that uh, uh, a saying uh, by Napoleon Bonaparte, actually, is, I found it interesting, and, and the saying goes that if you see your adversary making mistakes, never interfere, let him, let him sink and let him dig the hole. And that's pretty much uh, what the U.S. Uh, has observed from the beginning, what uh, Mr. Putin is trying to do. And that's not a war that he could win. That's the bet that the U.S. made. And even this, uh, what surprised the U.S. part is... Uh, Unlike what uh, uh, Mr. Biden, President Biden, experienced in Afghanistan, where the Afghani uh, government ran away, uh, you know, from the country right away, and uh, the Afghani people surrendered, uh, despite everybody said that it would be a war for two years. In this case, people thought the opposite. Probably Russia will run over Ukraine and not going to have much of uh, opposition. But look, uh, just the opposite happened to, uh, to the surprise, in a positive sense, to U.S. and NATO. Uh, on top uh, of this courageous uh, resistance uh, by the Ukrainian people, that they are writing history uh, every day and showing the world that uh, they are a nation indeed, unlike what uh, President Putin suggests. And they are a country indeed, unless stated otherwise. And they're dying for their country. They're fighting like hell. Their president is uh, showing a profile that no one has seen since uh, the end of Second World War. All those things are um, uh, things that uh, President Putin uh, obviously were not expecting. And coupled with that, that uh, the sanctions... Now, the sanctions come in uh, incremental fashion every single day, and there is a momentum growing also. Uh, people are seeing, the corporation are seeing that uh, uh, Russia and uh, Putin's war is, uh, is not going to be uh, as successful, and more corporations are deciding to get out of Russia, uh, not to be... Um, left behind, and they're getting on the uh, bandwagon, if you will. 
so many corporations that normally <clears throat> would not uh, consider leaving Russia, quitting Russia, had done it so today. And that must, that must be a big blow uh, to the life in Russia today. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. Sure, I mean, absolutely. I mean, yes, you're right. They are, they are fighting a very admirable battle, the Ukrainians. But, you know, let's take, let's take this uh, to the next level, the next section, if you like. Now, Zelensky called recently, called on to the world. He called the world an accomplice to Russia's attack. Is this a fair statement? I mean, other than these sanctions, uh, what is the rest of the world really doing? Okay, so uh, President Zelensky is, uh, I mean, he's doing his job. He is pushing the West, he's pushing the whole world to react, uh, you know, uh, against uh, Russia's aggression. He's doing the right thing, and, uh, you know, everyone should applaud uh, him uh, doing this. Um, but he also knows, I, I would think, he also knows that there's not going to be a military intervention. He accepts that. But he wants more weapons. He wants uh, the uh, uh, fighter jets, especially in Ukraine. If we, and he is right now focusing on, on that particular issue. And the vice president, Kamala Harris, is uh, uh, in Poland or, or on her way to Poland to, to make sure that uh, there is no stone left unturned to look at this possibility. However, it is very difficult for a number of reasons uh, for uh, the Polish uh, armed forces to hand over the, uh, the MiG-29s to Ukraine at this moment. However, um, they're looking at, uh, uh, they're really uh, inquiring about this possibility and maybe a few other things as well. Uh, everyone is up uh, trying to see in the United States, the entire Congress is absolutely willing uh, to give more help, financial uh, and also uh, military uh, uh, devices, weapons, etc. Uh, everybody is uh, considering uh, what can be done further to help Ukrainian people uh, take the fight uh, to, uh, to Putin. Indeed, and it seems that, uh, yes, everybody wants to help, but it does seem that Ukraine is losing a war that it can't win. I mean, it's outnumbered, it's outmanned. These, these MiG-29s, do they come with pilots or do they just give them the planes? Well, uh, the MiG-29s, uh, uh, Ukrainians know how to, how to fly uh, the MiG-29s because it's, they're part of the old uh, Soviet regime and so forth, so the knowledge is over there. That's not a problem, but the problem is that how are they going to be transferred? Initial idea was that the uh, uh, Polish uh, uh, armed forces would deliver those planes uh, to a base in Germany, which happens to be a NATO base, and then from there, the Ukrainian uh, pilots would come in and pick up these uh, planes and, and, uh, and fly. But uh, U.S. is considering that is very, a, a very dangerous route. And uh, Russia could uh, regard this thing as an open a war between uh, two, two blocks. And uh, let's not forget that uh, Mr. Putin is right now uh, who is in a, a very dire situation, uh, and uh, he uh, would like to escalate the war to a more general war with the U.S., and then he would, uh, he would be able to explain uh, not only to his people, but to, uh, to everyone uh, that he's, uh, he's under attack. So U.S. is uh, not going to engage in that. That's very clear. They're doing, uh, at best, whatever uh, the U.S. can do to stay away from an active uh, encounter with the Russian army. Uh, so that's, that's pretty sure uh, is the case, because doing so uh, technically will bring uh, uh, the, uh, uh, what is uh, feared by uh, entire humanity, uh, the Third World War. Indeed. In fact, you make an interesting point now. now we know that six humanitarian aid or humanitarian corridors are looking to be opened and kept clear for people who want to, uh, not only for people in Ukraine to get aid, but also for people to get out of the country if, if they want to. Now, doesn't this sort of lead to the point where perhaps if 
people leave, doesn't this give Putin the idea that he can then come in really heavy and just flatten Kiev or flatten major cities when there's no people there? Isn't that a fear? Well, one of the issues over here is that uh, uh, the, uh, the length of this uh, uh, war is working against uh, Russia. Because initially, he wanted to have this thing a very clean deal, uh, a very short duration of war, uh, with uh, no uh, uh, public uh, resistance so much. And therefore, he would be able to explain the whole world and to his nation uh, that he got what Russia uh, uh, so-called deserved and uh, move on. Uh, because that's what happened in Crimea. Let's not forget that. He moved into Crimea and basically the whole world watched. And uh, no matter, uh, despite all the, uh, uh, all the measures, the economic sanctions that uh, Obama administration put, he didn't care and it didn't really do much. We know that. And later he moved into Donbass. And prior to that, uh, what he did in uh, Georgia. I mean, it, the, the story goes on and on. So there is a there is a pattern that anybody can follow and see very easily, and especially in the last 10 years. But the Ukraine was a different piece. It was a first of all, it's a very major one. He uh, uh, let's uh, let's not forget that President Putin he himself placed uh, uh, more than 100,000 uh, soldiers on the border. So there is, a, there is a lot of accusations to U.S., and uh, there's a good point around that accusations, too. I would say that the U.S. has really agitated Russia to get into the war. We all know that. There's been, uh, there's been that uh, agitation element in the last three months. But let's not forget that. That ag agitation would not be possible uh, if uh, uh, Mr. Putin did not put all these 100,000 soldiers on the border and initially said that, hey, look, you know, this is my country. I'm doing exercises here. Who cares? You know, I just chose here 100,000 people. You know, it was very unusual and nobody really believed in it. And guess what? It, it turned out that it was not right. He definitely wanted to go to Ukraine. So all that warning... Uh, that the U.S. administration has made in the last three months, each and every uh, uh, every warning came out true. So this is this is another factual point. So from from that perspective, ev as every day passes, uh, Mr. Putin is uh, getting uh, more uh, uh, is getting more difficult for him. Now that the sanctions are going to take a visible impact within Russia, that's going to be another thing to follow. I'm not talking about the economic per se, but like everyday life. Uh, let's think about a, a Muscovite or a person in, uh, in uh, some of the more uh, influential cities uh, in, in Russia, uh, just going out and trying to get a, a cup of coffee, okay? Uh, there's no Starbucks, there's no McDonald's. OK, uh, there is no Unilever. There is no Procter & Gamble. Uh, uh, there is no Coca-Cola. I mean, you name it. All of a sudden, everything disappears. Okay? OK, if they see some of it today, trust me, they're not going to see it tomorrow once the inventory runs out because there's not going to be new supplies. And these are the kind of things that the ordinary Russians are going to see and going to say, hey, what's going on over here? Because what we hear is, interestingly enough, that the Russian people do not get the information as you and I see uh, today on TV. This is another interesting aspect of it. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, they are not available anymore to, uh, to the ordinary people in Russia. And they are rushing into the VPN, risking some security issues from their part. But uh, overall... Uh, and even some of the uh, very well-informed, sophisticated Russians are thinking that uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the operations in the eastern Ukraine is limited in the Donbass region. And, uh, and the Russians are fighting against the neo-Nazis in Ukraine and trying to protect the Ukrainian people. Uh, that, there is a lot of news out there. And like in the U.S., they are showing... On TV, some of the uh, Ukrainians. Actually, it was very interesting. One uh, one fellow who uh, uh, you know who is a restaurant operator in Ukraine. He's a Ukrainian. His father lives in Moscow. Okay, Ukrainian. And his dad calls and says, "Hey, how are how are things? How how is it going? Is it like in a normal daily life?" And he says, "Dad, I'm 
I'm with your grandkid and, and, and I'm, I'm just in a bomb shelter talking to you right now. He says, what? Are you running away from the neo-Nazis? Oh, I know. Those neo-Nazis are out there to get you. And, uh, and he, uh, the son explains to his father, no, 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 that's not what's happening. Here's, here's the situation. His father still doesn't believe him, okay? He says, you know what? You should get out of this bunker and uh, talk to the Russian soldiers. They are out there to give you a warm blanket and warm food. And guess what? Today, they bombed the Mariupol uh, 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 hospital, and uh, who knows how many uh, babies and mothers died. This is the reality. But in Russia... Uh, normal people, everyday people do not see that, do not hear that, and do not want to believe that, probably. So okay. that's another aspect of the war, unfortunately. It's a information war, disinformation war, all sorts of things are happening. And, and uh, this, is a, this is a war of the 21st century, that's for sure. Well, let, let's take that to the next level, then. If these uh, Russians themselves, as you say, don't really know what's going on in Ukraine, just to fight against neo-Nazis that want to help, you know, and Russia's there to help the Ukrainians. Once they start to feel these sanctions, are they, do they have the power, do they have the will to change government? Is, does put, do they, can they change Putin's mind? Can they, up, can they give upheaval and, and fight for their country? Is this possible? We've seen it before, no, we've never seen it successfully. Is it possible or do they want it? Uh, those are million dollar questions, right? We don't know. Uh, people don't know. And even people who are experts on Russia uh, admit they don't know the answer to that. Because uh, I guess it was uh, probably was one of the former uh, U.S. Ambassador, ambassadors to Moscow who wrote maybe a dozen books about Russia, one of the most knowledgeable individuals. I believe I heard him saying that uh, there is no uh, sociology research uh, in Russia. Nobody knows uh, what's going on. Uh, in other words, all these things that we are uh, accustomed to and we take it granted, like all the surveys, political surveys in our countries, you know, U.S., Turkey, and no matter where, uh, those, those kind of surveys are not uh, uh, reliable uh, when they're done uh, in Russia, apparently. So it's hard to say. But we know Russian people are uh, very uh, uh, proud of their country, rightfully so. And they fought against uh, Nazis themselves in the Second World War. They wrote uh, a courageous uh, history themselves. Indeed. Uh, indeed. In fact, they, they, saved, the they saved World War II, indeed. Absolutely. I mean, humanity it would never forget that. So this is the, you know, it's very difficult to tell the people of this country what their country is doing uh, uh, to another country right now uh, in, a, in a similar way as the U.S. has described. That, that's, that's not going to go well uh, with, uh, with Russians. You know, we can't expect that people one day is going to wake up and, and say, oh, okay, so, um, you know, I will start to think differently. There's nationality issues here. Uh, there's all these gray areas between the Ukraine and Russia all the time, and uh, some of it... Uh, you know, I, I understand that even the Ukrainians uh, uh, would would listen to in a in a sensible manner, but this should not be a a, a cause for a war as we see it today. Sure. Um, so okay. hopefully uh, tomorrow will be a better day for the people of Ukraine and for people of Russia and for everyone who live in this world. Indeed, but I want to take the uh, conversation to a slightly different angle here. Um, you know, the UK's Liz Truss and obviously US's Anthony Blinken, they just made a press conference. They talked about both countries pushing their defence spending, pushing for more of their... I mean, big guns, military hardware, it's big money, it's big business. US wants a war. As you said, they agitated uh, Russia. They want... I mean, this is, this is big money for somebody who's making some money out of this. What do you make of it all? I know the whole Europe, Germany's got 2% more on their defense. Is this wise? Is this, is this what, what this is really all about, money? 
Well, uh, I mean, uh, money is definitely uh, always a part of every story. We all know that. Uh, but I don't think it in itself you can explain because there are other ways that money can be made. And there are uh, a lot of ways that money are, is lost because of the wars. Big money is also disappearing because of war. Just look at the stock market and the way that it tanked and billions and billions of dollars uh, uh, are lost uh, from uh, the savings of people and institutions. So it, it is not a one-way street. However, um, if, you know, let's look at from uh, one perspective. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to become a little bit dangerous right now and make some uh, I have uh, missed political, uh, po political uh, uh, let me say, reading over sure. here. Uh, it may not be. Uh, it may not look uh, sane initially, but just give me a minute. Sure. It is possible. It is possible that out of all this, uh, when everything settles down, when the dust settles down, that we could see a new Russia, okay, which does not involve uh, Mr. Putin or his regime alike, okay, and where in the long run. Russia would be more integrated into the West, uh, or at least be uh, uh, not uh, part of uh, a Eurasian unity with China. So in the long run, this could actually hurt most uh, China. In the long, long run of adversaries between the US and China, because we know that in the next 10 years, we're going to see a a massive race, a brutal race based on technology between these two countries, China and the USA. Now, if China and Russia are comrades, as just like two or less than two months ago, both leaders said that our friendship has no limits, sky's the limit. Remember, that, yeah. that was really the Olympics, yeah. expressed during the Olympics. Now, if that is no longer the case, and uh, is Russia is no longer in the future part of this unity, so-called unity, then it would give a tremendous blow, uh, you know, against uh, uh, Chinese Communist Party in, in specifically. So uh, that, is, uh, that is a possibility out of this thing that can evolve, of course, uh, assuming that uh, uh, Russia and Mr. Putin uh, loses uh, their, uh, uh, their attempt to control and annex Ukraine as uh, they described uh, their attempt. Or if not, then it will be a complete different story. Uh, because during this war, one of the things that we see is that unity of uh, the Western nations. As some, if Biden, President Biden is successful at something, he's absolutely accomplished that. And everybody gives him uh, that one. Uh, remember, just three months ago, there was still not as much as a unity. And uh, President of the United States was very desperate in bringing this unification within the Western countries and People were all still all over the place. The exit from Afghanistan was a big blow against Mr. Biden, really weakened his credibility in the West, and everybody was questioning again. And all of a sudden, the whole Western nations are now unified against uh, uh, Mr. Putin's aggression to Ukraine. So in, in and itself, uh, even that is uh, a big blow uh, against, uh, uh, the, let's say, uh, a Eurasian bloc or, uh, or, or a Russian element uh, for that matter. Well, you certainly isn't the first time I've heard anyone say that theory there, Blunt, that's for sure. All right, let's wrap this up. Now, um, sanctions are on the table. You're saying rolling sanctions constantly every day. Things are getting ramped up. Is this really going to deter Putin? Until now, it hasn't. I mean, how much of a pariah state country are we likely to turn Russia into that it has to be self-governing and then will it really pull out of Ukraine? Can we see Putin honestly saying, hats off, guys, I'm sorry I made a mistake and pull out without, you know, sort of saving any kind of face or grace? 
It's, it's hard to see that. First of all, the sanctions in the short term would not deter him. Uh, on a midterm, though, uh, a, a lot of people are going to start to pain. But in the long term, Brad, long term, it's not only economics. These sanctions are going to impact uh, his defense system so badly because defense systems depend on technology. And he is now deprived of many of the uh, technologies that he needs uh, to uh, uh, to go to get ahead. So if you run the if you run the movie uh, ten years from now, and let's assume that he kept Ukraine, he just trying to keep the country over there. The sanctions are there. Uh, I cannot see how uh, Russia can maintain uh, a real big force just simply depending on China and doing bartering. Uh, and not being able to get the uh, uh, the parts uh, from the West because China does not have the equivalent technology as the West has. That's one of the things that we all have to remember. If China were to supply these things, you might say that, okay, Russia is going to be a little bit uh, dependent on uh, China. And even so, even if that happens, then I cannot see how the relation between Russia and China partnership could be a, a, a partnership of equal part. Russia is going to depend much more on China than otherwise. So in no matter how you look at it, uh, the fact that uh, uh, Mr. Putin uh, has not been successful in his uh, very quick action against Ukraine, I think he, uh, uh, he, 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 he probably is going to look at uh, a way out of this thing sooner uh, than later. And it won't, it won't surprise me that uh, he, might, uh, he might focus on uh, eliminating uh, Ukraine's access to Black Sea, for example, and uh, making sure that the eastern part of the Ukraine is under his control and then call for a ceasefire. That, that, might, be a, that might be a way out uh, for him to prolong his uh, regime and maybe he can negotiate some of the sanctions uh, some assurances and, and so forth, but not as a not as a winner of this war. Uh, that's uh, that's what my prediction is. Let's see. Let's see how it pans. And also, we have uh, Lavrov uh, 